Welcome back everyone, Toysh is here, and I'm back yet again with yet another Super Mario Brothers video, and today we're going to be checking out all of the brand new The Super Mario Brothers Movie Toy Offerings from Jack Specific, and a special shout out and thank you to Jax, who sent all these over for the purposes of this video, so we're not going to waste your time, we're just going to jump right into it. First and foremost, we have an early look at their brand new 15 inch Mario and Luigi plush slash a little bit of plastic figures. Just very large figures, we'll just say. First and foremost, of course, what would be a Mario and Luigi set without Mario? Big, huge, expressive eyes. That's what they're going for with the movie, which totally makes sense for Illumination and what they're kind of going for with the animation style, which does look good. Big open box. If you get one in the store, make sure you get a good looking one. You know, kids like to play with them in the store, yada yada. On the back side, you see he's 14 inches tall, features realistic eyes, and he's fully articulated. Kinda sorta, we'll get to that. Here's the barcode for when you wanna go ahead and pick this guy up. Should be available February 26, fingers crossed, right? Luigi, which is even taller than Mario, he clocks in at about a 15 inch mark. So give or take, around the same size, but Luigi needs to be a little bit taller. Same boxed up situation as Mario. Make sure you get yourself a good looking clean one, right? Realistic eyes, fully articulated, yada yada. And he looks good. You gotta have Luigi. You get a Mario, you gotta have a Luigi. As you can see also available Mario, which I mean, obviously, duh. Here's the barcode for Luigi as well when you wanna go ahead and pick him up in stores. And of course, here they all are out of the packaging. Not much of a difference. I mean, you basically see them within the packaging. You, you get what I'm saying, it just, you just kinda take them out. But here you go, you get to see them all in, uh, well, unboxed glory, I guess you would say. Mario looks pretty good. I like what they're doing here. It's got the plastic head, it's got the cool looking eyes that kinda follow you around the room, right? Not gonna lie. But, the rest of his body is plush. So I could totally see these. This would be a good offering. You go see the Super Mario Brothers movie with the kids. You don't wanna spend too much. You don't wanna have something that breaks immediately. Boom, here you go. A plush toy that stands and is articulated, right? But we'll go ahead and look at them in depth. Now, the fully plastic feature of Mario is all in the head. From the hat to the nose, to the eyes, right? Very cool. And the paint for the most part is pretty good. Around the mustache could have been a little bit better, just a little bit. But you get the head, it's a squishy plastic head. I really like the sculpt of the hat. That's impressive, I like the hair. Nothing but cloth goods below the neckline. He's got a little collar right there. That's all stitched, impressive. Kids will probably go to town on that, just be careful. And you got the legs and the arms and everything looks good, right? And he is articulated. now. It's sort of a bendy wire, big thick bendy wire within the arms, which give him a lot of mobility, a lot of posing. So again, perfect for the kiddos. And the arms get a lot of movement as do the legs. So you can get Mario in the running position, right? He's gonna jump up, punch a block, hop on an enemy. The kids can mimic all the Super Mario Brothers moves while still being able to stand him. He's got really hard plastic flat feet, which keep him aloft. So that's a nice touch as well. It's not just a stuffed animal. There's a little bit more to it, and I think kids will definitely dig it. Same thing with Luigi. Same situation. Plastic head. You got the Haunted Mansion eyes that follow you around the room, right? <laughs> He's actually painted a little bit more crisp than Mario. I'll give it to him. And then Luigi has the same sort of hat. He's all plastic. Cloth goods below the neckline. Nice collar. He's got the overalls. And I like that the buttons are real plastic. That's a nice little touch, right? That's cool. Comes with these giant tags, though, just FYI. I'm sure kids will want to rip those off. I myself would love to rip those off, but I'm insane, and I gotta keep everything just perfect, right? Same thing with the bottom of the feet. Nice hard plastic, and he stands a lot. Luigi can kinda get a little top heavy. He's a little bit taller, a little bit thinner, right? Bigger head than Mario, a little bit longer, but just get his legs in the right position, and you should have no problemos. And to look at them in size correlation with the Itsumiya Mario and the Let's Go Yoshi, well, you can see, yeah, they're much taller than those figures. And here's where I think this will fit better with the kiddos. You're not gonna spend an exorbitant amount of money on toys that can break, especially the electronics. So for parents out there, wink, wink, this might be the way to go. Just be like, you know what, it does the same thing. And then you do the Mario voices. 
from time to time. Kids love that. Come on, right? And then just to kind of see the Jack Specific Super Mario Brothers movie offerings in the 6-inch form as compared to these 14, 15-inch figures, it's kind of like they just upscaled them in many ways, especially with the plastic heads. So they're cool either way, either which way you want to go. Now, I know what you're saying. Maybe 15-inch larger figures are not your cup of tea. Maybe you want to go more in that smaller range. Well, in that case, we're going to be checking out their brand new 1.25-inch scaled figures and play set. There's quite a few to look at, but they're all the main characters, like Princess Toadstool, or Peach, as you could otherwise call her. Then you have Toad, looking all snazzy right there, along with the Koopa Paratroopa, he looks great, and Magic Koopa, or Kamek, right? Love that guy from the trailer. And Mario, very cool, you gotta have Mario, and of course his brother Luigi. So you got all the main characters, and as you can see on the back side, each one comes with a question mark box that unfolds to a little mini diorama. Here's the barcodes for when you want to search for them in store, and... Yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. We'll look at them each individually. Next up is the Mushroom Kingdom Castle, because you need a giant playset for all these 1.25-inch figures featuring the training grounds, kind of sort of what we've seen in the trailer thus far. And you get two little mini figures with this playset. But that looks pretty cool. It's a giant Mushroom Kingdom Castle. And hopefully there's a lot to do, a lot of displayability options. You do get the same Mario and Princess Peach with this set, so you don't have to buy them individually. But I love the packaging on this, very simplistic, very eye-catching. And on the back, you get to see how it unfurls and goes and does all the great things from the Mario world. you got interactive pieces, things move, things chomp. And here's the barcode for this when you want to search for it in stores as well. So another very cool set that we'll be checking out in this video. But... The one main thing, the thing that I was like, what, what do we got here? This is amazing. This is the Super Mario Brothers Plumbing Van Playset. And from the recent promo tie-ins of calling the Super Mario Brothers Plumbing, right? I absolutely love it. I love the van. The van is just awesome. It has this old school look, very Japanese, very European. It does come with a Mario minifigure. It's the same as the single and the castle playset. Again, very cool artwork all over the box, photos of what you're getting inside, and on the back side it shows you what it unfurls into, along with all the minifigures. The question mark box and the castle playset. Here's the barcode for this, when you want to go ahead and find it in stores. And again, all of this should be out, fingers crossed, February 26th. So, yeah, you can go ahead and pick this up, hopefully today. What up, what up, what up? And of course, here's everything taken out of the packaging. That took a while, but we got it. We got there. You get six minifigures, all with their own respective question mark boxes, which, when you have them all lined up like that, that makes for a diorama in and of itself. First up is Princess Peach. For as tiny as these little characters are, there's certainly a lot of paint on these, except on the other side right there. She has little mini sculpted shoes. She's got very minimal articulation on this minimal figure. Just the head moves. Her arms are sculpted, but they're painted. But she does look good for as tiny as this is. There's really little to no slop on these figures. And of course she comes with this big question mark block. And it's very cool. You got the white question mark on either side. Nothing on the bottom except for the usuals, right? And it simply just opens up just like that. Top, bottom, sides. And you basically just get a flat platform with a picture of the Mushroom Kingdom. Each one basically comes with the same thing. It's just a different angle of said mushrooms and you can put the princess or the characters right in the middle of the green square. Nice displayability option if you wanted to go that route and it simply just fits all back together. So it's kind of like a puzzle box, kinda sorta. I see what they're going for. It's a place to put the figure or figures as well or for a nice display option, you can have a bunch of these and it's just like the Mario game, which I totally appreciate. But with Mario, you're going to get the same thing. Little mini Mario, lots of paint. All the buttons are painted on this guy, even on the sides of his legs. They went to town. That's pretty cool. For, again, as tiny as these are, they really nailed it. So I definitely appreciate that. You also get Kamek 
Again, the paint is great on this guy. His arms will move and his head will move. Otherwise, it's kind of like a Princess Peach situation. Not much going on as far as the legs. But uh, yeah, looks great along with the paratroopa. Now, he looks the best, I think. He's got the most going on and he has the most articulation. He's got the giant spear. He's got the arms. Nothing moves in the legs, which is kind of a good thing of this figure. He's got the head and he's got articulated wings. However, he gets a little back heavy, of course, because the wings are ginormous. So when you want to go ahead and stand him up, make sure you kind of angle the spear and whatnot. It may take a couple tries, we'll just say. So he just fell over. But otherwise, yeah, there you go. You got him to go along with Toad, which again... Minimal articulation on this guy, but I mean, look at the back right here. Everything's painted, the frying pan, the rope. It's basically Treasure Tracker Toad right there. That's pretty cool. He's got minimal, like minimal articulation, let's just say, only in the head. Nothing at the arms, nothing at the legs. But he makes up for it in all that paint, which looks good. It's just a miniaturized version of these larger six-inch figures that Jax's are doing. And then you have Luigi. You gotta have Mario, you gotta have to have a Luigi. He's got the same articulation as Mario. He's got the head and the arms, nothing else moves. But again, everything's painted. Everything looks pretty good. And as you can see, when you open everything up and you get it all displayed out, you got all the characters on their respective green squares. You can see the pictures in the back. It's just a sticker. It's all different angles of the various mushrooms from the Mushroom Kingdom, which, hey, that totally works. You're in it for the blocks. You're in it for the minifigures. But it kind of looks like the video games when you kind of have to run around and only hit specific squares to unlock the next section. So everything is kind of tied in. Whether or not they meant to do that, that's totally what it reminded me of when I displayed all of these out. So that's very cool. I got to give it to them. But we got a castle playset to check out to house all these little mini figures. So this is quite impressive. It's just as a display piece alone. I'll give it to them all day. It's nicely painted. It's nicely stickered. And they went ahead and did the stickers for me. It's a solid miniature playset. And the sticker in the middle, of course, the iconic Princess Peach saying glass. You got all these little mini sticker windows right here. They're all applied nicely you got some doors you got some nice sculpted work in and of the brickwork that makes up the castle so that's pretty cool the doors will open you can get one minifigure standing in there you could probably guess which one up top are all these little flags this is something that comes separate you simply just install them yourself they're very easy but they're very flexible rubber so nothing's going to break off if you drop it but I love the paintwork on this thing. For as minimal as it is, it definitely works. And I love this high-res sticker on the back of the background of the Mushroom Kingdom. It's awesome. They did a great job there. And it really is eye-catching and makes this playset pop. Now, it simply just opens just like this. This back part opens. This side opens. And it just closes up all natural as well. So that is cool to see now like i said it comes with the same exact mario and princess peach figures as we just looked at with the single question mark box releases so you can either just get the play set or you can buy the singles whatever you want to do it does come with these really cool mechanized piranha plants which i'm going to say they're probably mechanized because this is more of a training ground and not using the real ones we'll have to see the movie to see what goes on however on the bottom as you can see i wish these inserted somewhere just to be a little bit more stable because they're kind of just ones you put every which way the actual playset has a lot of moving parts which is nice to see like these blocks that simply just spin out or you can go either which way have mario jump into and fro as you can see this block right here just kind of moves in. It doesn't really do anything. It doesn't shoot out, which I kind of wish it did. You have the standard brown brick boxes, the question mark boxes, these little things that fall down as soon as you step on them. And you have the bullet bill, which is on a lever right here. It just kind of moves to and fro. I wish that maybe he kind of fired out. Something like that would have been kind of cool. Something spring-loaded. He's got some stickers for the face and the eyes comes down here, and the background is nice as well. Everything is very high res, everything is very clean, there's no distortion. Right here, as with the other section, this block will rotate out, it's got some spikes on it. This little part with the fireballs, I wish they would have done something different, designed it a little bit different, because it hits the block every which way you want to spin it. 
it's not just free moving. You know what I mean? It's just kind of like, yeah, it hits, and then you got to move it again. Come over here. You got the question mark, brown brick boxes, everything else. Nice photos. It looks good. And I'm going to say that I think it looks better as a display option than a play function. So you can use the 1.25 inch characters, right? The micro characters, you could say. Kind of reminiscent of the old school Jack's offerings. Yeah, Mario going all throughout the world, meeting up with Luigi. You can have the Koopa Paratroopa. And they all situate, they all display nicely within this world. So there's no problems there. And you got Treasure Tracker Toad, right? For lack of a better term, just Toad. Movie Toad. And the mechanized piranha plants. Those all look great. But to me, it's a little bit too divided. It's not like a clear-cut, seamless. You got walls and such, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, there are different areas. You could totally say that. You could put Kamek up there around the fireball area. So it does work. But in terms of projectiles or things moving, it's a little lackluster. I will say that. As far as a play feature for children, I would say they might be playing with this for about five minutes and then go, what else you got? But in terms of display options for a collector, for a big Mario fan, that I think is where it's at. This one might be for older audiences as far as the sustainability. Like I like putting Mario and Princess Peach and I could totally see myself putting this next to my N64 and my Mario collection. You know what I mean? It's that sort of deal for me. It's very cool, it's well done, but the play feature for children, yeah, I'm gonna have to say probably not. But here we are with this playset right here. This is the Super Mario Brothers plumbing van playset. Put everything else aside, this thing is glorious. Just the van itself. I don't even care that it opens. It's just amazing. You got the old school artwork on the side. You got the whole Mario Brothers on the license plate. I love that. Mario on this side with the Mario Brothers plumbing. It's perfect. That's it. Video's over. Just get the van, right? No, we'll show you how everything works. But as far as display options for me, I love it just because of the van and the tire spin. So that's a nice play feature for kids that want to play with this particular play set. The back of the van simply opens just like that. And then it's just a matter of unfurling everything, as you can see, right? You get the front and the back, everything else just kind of opened up. And then you get to see the inner workings of the Mushroom Kingdom. And then kind of the dark lands, right? Of Bowser's Kingdom, I'm assuming. I mean, the trailer told us. But... You get to see everything that it turns into. And it is painted nicely. And it's got nice photos, nice sticker backdrop. It's got brickwork. It's got the green pipes and pipature and everything else kind of running through it. So it's very cool, very engaging for the eyes. But again, not a whole lot going on in terms of a functional play feature with something that would be exciting to grab kids' attention. You know what I mean? I love it because of the van itself. And then, yes, it's fun to display. I'm not going to be playing with this per se, but just in terms of it being Mario and how it looks, it's pretty cool. Like this pipe right here looks like there's a bit of a cloud on it, something like that. We'll have to wait for the movie, to be honest with you. But I would hope that you could put Mario in there and push a button and it would rocket fire him out, right? Like he's getting shot out of a green pipe. No, you can't really do anything with that. Up top, you can always drop him through, right? That's kind of fun. But then he kind of just free falls and slams into the base right there. I would have hoped that he could have shot out, like the trailer, into the Mushroom Kingdom. You know, more of a slide feature. Same exact Mario as the single pack. You can slide him kind of, sort of, into the Darklands. But again, it doesn't really go. You kind of have to force him in there, right? So again, it's really well done. It's nicely painted. Everything works. Everything is really cool when you open it up. But again, as far as the play feature, it's just kind of like, yeah, well, that was fun for about two seconds. Like, for me, and how I perceive this and how I appreciate this, you have all the various Marios, like, have him out in the Mushroom Kingdom, like we see in the trailer, right? Hanging out with Toad. Toad's about to take him to Princess Peach's castle. Then you have Mario and the Warp Pipe, right? Wherever that goes, however that works, we don't know just yet. But you could put Luigi in the Darklands being accosted by Kamek and the Koopa Paratroopa. So there is a lot of displayability here, but in terms, again, of the fun factor, nah, it's just fun to look at, to be quite honest with you. However, in talking about the van and the scalature, if you have the 2.5-inch Mario characters, 
Well, that definitely works. I love that. That's a perfect scale chair. So all of this is kind of intermixable, right? Which I absolutely love. And that's the best part about all these Nintendo toys over the years. And just to see scale chair with the 1.25 inch to the 2.5 to the 4 inch to the new 6 inch Mario to the 12 foot tall It's a Me a Mario, right? So you can see the gradual incline of Mario figures. That's pretty cool. And they are all kind of intermingly because of the various video games. And then finally, I'm sure the figures a lot of you have been waiting to see. These are the new Jank specific Super Mario Brothers 5 inch scaled figures along with the 7 inch scaled Bowser. And just as a heads up, I don't have the Mario Karts just yet, but rest assured, those are coming soon. But let's talk about these figures. And the packaging is awesome. Cannot wait to see the Super Mario Brothers movie. Of all the things coming out, that's the one. That's the one I want to see. Nintendo and Illumination and Jack Specific has delivered on all the awesome toys. I got to hand it to them. The packaging is exquisite on this. Very simplified, but just perfect. Really pops, really shows off Nintendo, the Mario Brothers, even on the side. It looks very Japanese, importish, you know what I mean? Very cool. 16 POA, realistic eyes, premium details. And here's the barcode when you want to go ahead and find him in stores. But what's a Mario without his brother Luigi? Of course, the green and the blue guy. And we got him as well. Same exact packaging. Very fancy overall. Big window box. Shows off his one accessory that he comes with. And on the sides... All that good stuff. I like how the little imagery of the mushrooms, the question mark blocks, Starmans, they're all embedded into the packaging. And here is the barcode for Luigi as well. Next up, in the Mushroom Kingdom, we have Princess Toadstool, a.k.a. Princess Peach, looking all great. The black really mixes with the pink right there. It really makes her pop in the packaging. Has one accessory as well. And the same sort of deal. Nice photo of the figure. And Peach. On one side, she's got a little bit less articulation, around eight, but she's got the realistic eyes, yada, yada, barcode, go find her, you know the business by now. And of course, Toad, very cool. Love Toad, love the trailers showing Toad off, right? Very cool so far. I know nothing about the movie, don't want to know nothing about it, but it loves me the toys. That's really where I'm at, and I can't wait to go to Super Nintendo Land. That's going to be great. Nine points of articulation for Toad, and here is the barcode for him as well. But you need an enemy, of course, right? The enemies of all enemies, the final boss, Bowser. And he is the giant seven-inch figure, super premium, ultra details, nicely painted, all that jazz. You get the idea. Very cool, very excited, very, very curious how this fire-breathing effect works. God, I cannot wait to try that. Everything on the box, you just see, it's just very cool. They have a little promo, right? He's got 14 POA and the fire breathing effect. Can't wait to check that out. Here's the barcode for Bowser as well. Now, all of these should be hitting store shelves, hopefully, in and around February 26th. So hopefully you can go and pick them all up because I think you're going to want to. And again, just to kind of talk about the packaging, if you're one of those, you just want to get it, keep these all in the packaging, well, you could do so as well and i think they all look good they all match up they're just very stylized and shout out to jacks i know what you're doing there i see what you're doing the old nintendo entertainment system nes boxes with that black on there i got you wink wink ah, i see what you're doing nice touch i gotta say so sit back relax grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee this is an early look at the brand new the super mario brothers five inch and seven inch figures by jack specific and, of course, here is everything taken out of the packaging. Hey, hold on a second, Nate. That's... There we go. Look at that. Nice touch, right? From the old video games now to the movies. And they look pretty darn good. I got to give it to Jack Specific. I'm beginning to think that's why we didn't see a lot of 4-inch figures last year. You guys were hard at work. I see what you're doing there. Starting off with Toad. Toad's one accessory is a frying pan, and it's in the trailer. He just kind of whips it out, and he's going to go bash some Bowsers, right? That's pretty cool. Nicely painted black with a brown handle and Toad himself. He's wonderful. I mean, Toad is just so cool. I got to give it to him. And the paint details on these is tremendous. Everything from the bags to the rope 
to his little cup. You got a little lantern, all the buckles, everything is painted on this. And it looks fantastic. I gotta give it to him all day. He's even got a little slot right here, as you can see. And you take said frying pan, and it just slides right in there. And he has weapon slash accessory storage. I love that. That is awesome. And everything just looks good. You'll notice the hole right here on the back. And it took me for a second. I was like, okay, wait, what is this for? You flip the frying pan around, right? And you go ahead and you stick it through the back, okay? It's not gonna look great, but it really aids in standing toad because he does not stand well. The backpack is very heavy. As you can see, he kind of leans back. But that frying pan being there now with the handle, if you just kind of move his legs and getting in position, that helps him stand. It's like a little mini tail, right? For so many figures in a way. So that's cool. It's like a third leg. <laughs> they rock that. Very nice. The head articulation is what it is. He just simply goes back and forth. There's not much to it. He's got a big bulbous mushroom head, right? Not a whole heck of a lot going on. Go easy on the arms at first. They were kind of stuck in the shoulders. He's got single jointed elbows, nothing at the wrist, nothing at the waist, and his little feet kick out just like that. I totally dig that. You could say he's got pins in the arms, but they're pinless on the legs, and that just looks good. But he holds the frying pan really well, just like in the trailer when he and Princess Peach are going out, right? Whatever they're doing, just kind of, you know? So that's awesome. I definitely dig it. The paint is amazing. The articulation is what it is for Toad. It's totally fine for this type of character. He's got his big backpack. They rock that. Very nicely done. And then you have Princess Peach, and she comes with her umbrella slash parasol sort of deal. It's closed up. It has a little heart as the handle, which is pretty cool. And it's nicely painted. It has little elements of pink, a little bit of a darker pink to the white tip right there. And Princess Peach herself. Now, I'm going to tell you in all honesty, she's got the least amount of articulation. She is painted beautifully, so she's got a lot going for her. But the articulation is a little bit lacking considering all the other figures that have a lot of articulation. Maybe another accessory or two. That would have really kind of evened it out. Her crown is more of a soft plastic it's very malleable, but again, painted gold. It has all the rubies and the gems and whatever in there, reds and blues. Nice hair, nice sculpted hair, but the articulation, let's say, in the neck is zero, right? Because of her hair, she's got a bit of a waist. The arms will kind of sort of go out to that much. So again, can't stress enough. Very minimal articulation, single jointed elbows. She'll spin at the wrists. Nothing at like the bicep and things of that nature. The bottom, she's very hollow, as you can see. She has feet. The feet don't move. So that's why I think an extra accessory or two really would have evened it out. She holds her one accessory nicely, right? Looks good. That is an accessory, like, let's say, for Super Princess Peach. So that's a nice little touch right there. Curious to see if it pops up in the movie somehow. She can hold it on this hand, which also looks great. But again, great paint, great looking figure, could have used a few more accessories, could have used a little bit more articulation. And that's that for Princess Toadstool. And then you have Luigi. Luigi comes with one accessory, which is this big flashlight, which is very cool. It's nicely painted, has some black elements to it with a red switch. Nicely painted all the way around. Would have been really cool, let's say, if the top part where the light is was like a glow in the dark. Something like that just to kind of add to it would have been nice. And Luigi himself is a great looking figure. Luigi and Mario are top notch. I'm just gonna, wanna save you some time? Sure, there you go. The eyes are great. They're really emphasizing the realistic looking eyes. In a way, it kinda looks like it follows you around the room, right? Which are creepy, but they're cool at the same time. I love the sculpt of the hat, all the little creases and such. It's very much the movie version of Luigi, but in a great way. Still one way that could be just the video game. You know what I mean? They're not going too far out the realm. He's got some nice paint on his shoes. I mean, God dang, he's got great paint. Buttons are painted gold. He's got little gold button accents more towards his legs. The articulation will basically just spin his head. There's not much going on up top, but the arms get a nice range of movement. There's nothing at the bicep. But he does have single jointed elbows, which will spin, and then he will also spin at the wrists as well. Perhaps maybe some extra hands. That would have been interesting, right? More of a punching hand for knocking blocks. Spins at the waist. He's got thigh. He's got single jointed knees, right? That works. 
And then his feet will kind of sort of rock. There's enough movement in there. It'll spin, kind of go up and down. Not a whole lot, but he does hold his flashlight accessory very well. It just simply goes into his hand and he holds it just like that. So overall, very solid, very happy with Luigi. Nice range of motion, nice movement, nice articulation, nice paint. They nailed it. Very cool looking Luigi. And then, of course, the star of the show, the plunger. <laughs> a Mario that comes with a plunger. And that's just perfect. Mario Brothers plumbing. You get it. It's nicely done. Maybe heat it up. Kind of got warped in the packaging a little bit, but not too shabby. And then you got Mario himself. Big, huge, expressive eyes, just like the movie. And one thing I want to point out. These aren't, to me, exactly spot on to the movie, and I kind of dig that. There is a certain old-schoolness, Japanese, toy kind of quality to these, which I really appreciate because I really feel like that hits all the marks of Nintendo. I mean, even the buttons right there on the side of his overalls. They're painted. The shoes, the laces, the bottom of the feet. No peg holes, though, unfortunately, on these. I would have preferred that just for stands and whatnot and make them look... All fancy like. You can turn the head just like that, just as Luigi's does. Get the arms going all the way out. He's got single jointed elbows, spins at the wrist, nothing at the bicep. You get the idea. Same exact articulation. He's got the waist. Nothing, let's say, in a swivel at the waist or an ab crunch, but he does have thigh. He's got single jointed knees. You can get him into that running pose. See, I think that's where if you had some peg holes, you could kind of put him into a stand just to kind of keep him more aloft. You know what I mean? But in that sense, yeah, he really does look great. These aren't just video games. These aren't just movies. These are a nice amalgamation of the two, and they really do make for some cool-looking toys. I mean, even just having Mario holding a plunger as he does, that's awesome. Just like in that promo where you call the Super Mario Brothers plumbing, it's got the old-fashioned music. They nailed it. And then, of course... This is the one right here. Now, Bowser does come with one accessory. It's this little squeezy bottle. You fill it with water, and I'll show you exactly what it does in just a couple minutes here because you're not going to want to miss this. Bowser looks awesome. He's seven-inch scale. He's huge, right? He's very nicely painted. He's very nicely detailed. This is a great-looking figure. From the horns to the red hair, it's the movie-ish Bowser. It's the video games-ish Bowser. It's every Bowser in one. He has some very cool reptilian skin. The plastic feels very cool, very unique. His tail is gummy. You can kind of move it around and whatnot. He's got these big spikes. His shell is soft. I'll show you exactly why in just a second. But overall, yeah, you see all the scales, his big old Hot Topic bracelets and everything else, right? You could get his knees stretched out all the way. He's a little bit pre-posed right here, as you can see. So you want to keep his knees bent because otherwise it's not going to stand, not in a million years. But he's got some feet articulation. He's got the knees. He's got around the thigh groin area. Nothing in the middle because I think that's where this magic I'm about to show you happens. I don't know how this works. It's totally mind-boggling to me. But just wait. The head doesn't really move. Nothing in the jaw. The hands will spin. He's got single-jointed elbows. Those will rock. Those will go up in the shoulders. So plenty of articulation for the body type of Bowser, right? So it meets all my needs. It's very cool. Now, what you want to do is you're going to pull the shell off just like that. It's a big old rubbery piece. It just comes right off. It's very cool. You want to put it on a Mario or something like that. You could totally do that. It's got one hole in there. That's where the spike button goes through to activate this thing. <laughs> it's so freaking cool. Anyways, you have the on and off switch. Take the battery cover, undo it with a screwdriver, get three brand new batteries. Trust me, I tried it with the old one. Don't do it. Don't even try it. Get three brand new batteries. That's the way to do it. You can screw it back in if you want. Make sure that you're going to turn on the on switch. But wait, there's more. Pull this piece off the back of his head right here. This is like the sponge reservoir right here, as you can clearly see. Nicely hidden, right? That's awesome. Very well done. You take your little squeezy bottle, and I would say put in anywhere from 8 to 10 drops. Kind of go slow. It doesn't take much, but you'll see as it sort of kind of fills up, you'll know when to stop. It's not going to be a matter of, like, did I put enough in? 
you'll begin to see, yep, that's got just enough water. It's right at the top. Then put that down, get your little top right here, re fix that back into his head, just like that. I just love the way that that looks. It just, it's seamless right there. Switch it on to on. You're gonna be in business soon. Grab his big old rubbery shell, get that back on there, make sure that button slips right through the hole right there. And uh, yeah, get ready to push this. Just push it. This is this is so cool. Push it in, and he literally starts fire breathing smoke, right? A little light kind of gives that little element of fire, right? Like he's known to do fire breathing effects. And he starts to basically vape. <laughs> for lack of a better term, right? He's kind of like a humidifier, right? Also, in a way. But that is just so unbelievably cool to me. That is an old-fashioned toy, but it's like a revolutionary toy. Like, how many toys can you say you fill with water like that and then it fire breathes in a way? And, I mean, it's a lot of smoke. They're, they're not pulling any punches here. This is hands down. This is like a toy of the year. I'm not even joking you. Even when you turn the lights off, how... Frickin' rad does that look. My God, that is just so sinister, but crazy, and Bowser all in one go. They nailed it. Now, for those of you wondering, well, wait a minute, what's the care for this? Read your instructions, right? You fill it with water, then you're gonna wanna take all the water out of it. So just keep pushing the button till he stops vaping, basically. Make sure there's nothing left. You don't wanna get any Bowser mold going in there. but. Like I said, read the instructions if you get caught. I just got to push this button again. I just, look at that. I could do this all day. This is going on my desk for quite some time. I love this friggin' thing. But if you were wondering, how does this new movie Bowser scale with the prior release, Jack Specific, 4-inch video game Mario Toys? And I would honestly tell you, yeah, it totally works. Bowser's size always changes, so it's just a matter of taste. I mean, even looking at the prior release video game Bowser right here, he fits as well, so both of these work, but you might go more towards the movie, well, because of the fire breathing effect, too. But on the flip, if you look at the video game Bowser with the new movie toys, I mean, that works as well. That's like Mario Kart status, right? Bowser got a little bit smaller, so everything really works, I'm gonna be honest with you. Even Mario with like a video game Goomba or the video game Super Mushroom, you know what I mean? It just all works together. Even in comparing the prior released video games to now these movie figures, they're a little bit taller, but they still work together. All the different accessories, all the different looks from Toad to Princess Peach and everything in between. There's subtle differences, but I like that they didn't go too crazy in changing the designs. These are every bit the Mario characters we know and love. Now, if you want to look at it in terms of what Jack Specific has released prior from Sonic the Hedgehog to World of Nintendo with Star Fox and Metroid and Legend of Zelda and whatnot, these are definitely going to be bigger figures, yes, of course. And these new figures are going to run you $20 for the 5-inch and Bowser will run around $30. And that's my only concern is that they're well-done figures, don't get me wrong, but I've always liked how Jax has kept it more at the lower price point. So definitely, please continue doing your $12 figures. They're such a blast to collect. It wouldn't be a bad idea to have a collector line, maybe put some more accessories here and there in there. You nailed the paint, but overall, Jax has got a solid Nintendo lineup. It's awesome. And because these are new figures, just so you can kind of get an idea of where they're scaling, here is a bunch of different figures from various companies. So you can see Mario's at the five inch. So yes, he will still be significantly shorter than most brands. So that will wrap it up for my early look at some of the brand new Jack Specific, the Super Mario Brothers movie tie-in toys. And a very special shout out and a thank you again to Jank Specific for sending all of these out for the purposes of these videos. And thank you very much to everyone who watched. There's a lot of great things happening and I am very excited about the Super Mario Brothers movie. Can't wait to go see it, but it's nice to know there's some excellent toy merchandise out there. So you go watch it, you get your family, you get the kiddos a giant 15 inch plush or a 1.25 inch playset, whatever. And for the older kids, right? Us collectors, you know what I'm saying? Those five inch figures and especially that fire breathing Bowser, right? That is just amazing. So. 
I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, get this. This is the thing right here. I love it. And when they do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.